Hey guys, it's GMC Nerf Project here coming at you with another video. It's been a while. I know it's been a while. What, like two, three months now? That's pretty ridiculous, but uh, I've been have a lot of stuff going on. I have been working on modding a little bit here and there, but the main reason why I don't upload videos is just because it's the making the video process that I really have a hard time with. Not that I like don't know how to do it, but I don't do it well. Uh, my videos take four or five hours to make and for a few reasons like one I don't like to make videos that are really low quality and uh, with this video you may see a few of the pictures are kind of blurry and I apologize for that you know I was trying to get this video done so there's gonna be some of that but for the most part my videos just take a while cuz I I try and t make high quality videos I don't like to do updates and you know those cheap videos where it's just off of a webcam and stuff like that I try and do nice stuff so that usually involves HD pictures so that takes a while to make and I have been modding I've been working on a couple projects uh, stampede I've been working on but I haven't had a steady source of income up until recently just because I don't really have a job but now that it's fall I've been going around and making money raking leaves so I've started to have some dough and that brings me to my present video I picked up a retaliator so I figured I'd uh, do a review on it for you guys not really an unboxing or anything like that it's more of a mod guide I suppose than a review but I'll just get right into it so I bought this at Kohl's the pack that I bought is the rapid fire mission kit essentially it just takes away the stock and the barrel attachment which I don't really want anyway but it takes those away and it replaces the 12 round clip with an 18 round clip and then it adds another 18 round clip and honestly this is like the worst deal I've had in my entire life what is this like 55 bucks and literally you add another clip and you take away a few attachments and it like doubles the price the the only reason why I bought this is because I had some Kohl's cash and and uh, there was a big sale so it ended up being like less than 20 bucks but really I would not recommend this pack it's it's just ridiculously expensive but I do like the 18 round clips and as you can see in this slide here it comes with two of them uh, pretty nice clips uh, they are stampede clips essentially here's my next picture comparing it to a stampede clip it's just clear on one side, which to me makes absolutely no, no sense considering the fact that it's clear on the right side. So if you're right handed and you're holding your blaster, you don't see the clear side. So you're just like showing it to your enemy and you're like, hey, here's all my darts, see how much I have left. If you're a lefty, I imagine, you know, that's nice for you, but for us righties out there, it's pretty useless. But onto the blaster itself. So the Retaliator is essentially a redone recon. So taking it apart is going to be the same. Uh, I got my slide here showing you all the screws. Most of you guys probably already know this, but for you newer modders out there, we have all the screws on the body. We have two screws on the back cap that uh, holds the uh, plunger rod. And two hidden screws. If you pull the slide back a little bit, it exposes those two screws. The yellow uh, circles at the front of the gun are where those two screws are. So you just got to pull it back and that exposes them. And once you do all of that, you want to gently pry the blaster apart and then you can get a good look at your internals. Uh, again, this picture is a little bit fuzzy. I tried to do my best, but here it is. So, on um, this next picture, I'm gonna outline all the parts and tell you what they do. So, at the top left, you have the brown box that I outlined. That is your tactical piece. It goes to the top of your slide and holds on all your attachments and all your tactical stuff. So, uh, be careful that you don't lose that. It has a little spring that goes with it, so, uh, you want to take that out and put that aside so you don't lose it. Now with the rectangular red box, that is your clip lock and if you leave that lock in, what that does it is, is it prevents you from putting a clip in when the blaster is uh, primed forward. And you can leave that in. I took it out simply because I don't like locks. But even if you do take it out, you still don't want to put a clip in when the blaster is primed forward because that will uh, as you slam the clip in, it widens the mouth, uh, the uh, clip, where the uh, the part that holds the dart in at the very top, it widens it. So then your darts will just keep uh, sliding straight out and they won't hold in the clip. Which essentially makes your clip useless, which uh, no one likes a useless clip. And with the uh, green box, that is your... I guess it's your depriming lock. What it does is that if your blaster is uh, primed back, you can't pull the trigger to deprime it. Now I'm going to be installing a Orange Mod Works uh, Stage One kit in here, which is in the mail. So you can expect another video this week, which is going to be a new for me. But anyway, I'm going on a tangent. 
uh, when it's primed back, if you take that lock out, you can pull the trigger and deprime it, which is very useful, and I removed that lock. And then with the purple box, that is your catch. Always want to leave that in. Obviously, that holds back your, uh, your actual spring and plunger rod so that your blaster can actually shoot darts. So you want to leave that in, and it has a little spring that goes with it. Make sure you don't lose that. And then at the bottom right, you have the little uh, dart holder piece that might come out. I kind of just tended to show you in this picture everything that might fall out and where it would go, just to make sure. So you can decide what you want to keep in your blaster. You know, I've shown you what everything does. So once you've decided, you know, you can take stuff out or leave stuff in. We're going to move on to the bolt assembly. So in this picture, I show you the plunger... Uh, the plunger housing and the actual barrel and bolt sled. So with the retaliator, it's a little different. You know, it's obviously a direct plunger system, which makes it shoot better. So you don't have to worry about the uh, white piece on the right, actually, because that has a perfect seal. You can, you know, stick your hand on it and feel it. It's got a perfect seal. You don't even have to mess with it. But the left has a okay seal on that uh, O-ring over there. So what you might want to do is... Uh, here, I'll go to my next slide. I have a, uh, it's circled here. You might want to re gently remove the O-ring. You want to be real gentle. You don't want to stretch it at all. Otherwise, your blaster is useless. So you remove the O-ring, and if you got some plumber's tape, you can wrap about a quarter layer around, maybe half. You really don't need much, but it does affect your, uh, your seal. So you just want to make it so that the pieces fit together snugly. And once you found that nice, happy medium between, uh, for the lack of a better word, snugness of the O-ring and the white piece and the uh, fluid movement so that there's not uh, too much friction between them. You want to re-grease it. I use Orange Modworks silicone grease. I love that stuff. It makes everything so much simpler because I tried different greases in the past and they kept expanding my O-rings and I don't know, I have like three trash Mavericks because of it. So, you know, you want to find the right grease. You definitely don't want to put too much. You just want to put a little bit and make it nice and nice and smooth. So I recommend Orange Modworks Grease, you know, they're great. But once you've done that, you, we can move on to the, uh, I'll call it the forward priming lock here, outlined in red. If you take apart the two screws and remove the piece on the inside, this allows you to, once you've cocked back your blaster and primed it forward, uh, you can pull it back again and slowly deprime your blaster. But I leave this lock in for the purpose that once you've primed it back and primed it forward and, you know, sometimes you want to deprime it, but... Other times you don't. You just you know you just want to shoot it. You have to hold it with your hand, uh, hold it forward because this lock isn't there anymore. And if it jumps back even a little bit, the way the retaliator is designed, uh, the O-ring will completely lose its seal, and you can't even fire the blaster. So if you pull the trigger with it back even just a little bit, it'll like slam forward, and the dart will not even really shoot. So that's just not good for your parts, and it's just kind of stupid. So you don't want to do that. I leave the lock in. You know I can fire the dart into my hand and just you know. I can deal with it, but I definitely recommend that you leave that in. So once we've dealt with those two parts, we can move on to the new air restrictor. The Elite air restrictors are a little bit different than the regular ones. They actually do restrict the air, but not as much as before. So they do provide an air buffer, but you don't need to take them out to improve range. You know, I know everyone online is like, you gotta take out the air restrictors, you gotta take them out, but Orange Modworks has done studies and they show that you really don't need to. You know, you'll gang a little bit, but not as much as you would in, like, regular blasters. So, I leave it in, and I'm going to be getting their Stage 1 kit, which I recommend you do too. But, so that's going to add plenty of power. I don't really need to move the air restrictor. And by leaving it in, I'm prolonging the life of my parts. But if you choose to take it out, you know, that's your decision. You just pound it through, uh, you want to be gentle, of course, but with a long screwdriver or drill it out with a drill bit. And so now we've pretty much done all of our mods. So you can put all the parts back into the retaliator. And I have a picture here showing you how they all go back together. You know, everything should nest right. The white piece, uh, the four pegs uh, fit in right. And then the two, uh, I'm going to call them pegs. I don't have a better word for them. Uh, rest on the bottom. You can see them lining up with the bolt sled. Those have to be on the bottom, not on the top. Otherwise, your blaster won't fit together right. All right, guys, we're completely done. You just close it back up and screw it back together. Thank you guys so much for listening to my videos. I know it's been a long video, but I wanted to, you know, just talk with you guys during this one. So thanks for listening. I will have more videos coming soon. I completely love the Retaliator. It shoots great. Hope you guys love it too. All right, see you guys.